What's up, dog? <laughs> What's up? Just wanted to give a um, shout out. All right, best air fresheners in the market. All right, greatest smelling. This one is blueberry. Smell this it? must be a smelling saw, right? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Smelling Woo, shit, that sucks. Ooh, I just took a little whiff too. I know it's gonna be strong. Oh man. Ooh, that shit'll wake you up. Oh my god. Ooh, you got a big old nose too. That thing probably fucking hit you hard. What's up guys, it's Nicky Rod. You're watching B-Team Jiu-Jitsu, home of Mexican ground karate. All right, so we're here two days before crit. <laughs> Nicky Rod taking the class today, running through some wrestling techniques. Um, we hit six rounds at the end of class. We get the uh, sort of lower level guys to make sure they do positional sparring. DDS broke up July. We set this up not long after. Uh, obviously everyone had to move down here. And actually what sucked was everyone was kind of injured at the same time. Like I was healthy for a while uh, after I broke my hand and then I uh, injured myself again, injured my other hand. Nicky Rod torn bicep. Uh, Nicky Ryan had, his, had to have his meniscus stitched back up. Ethan ACL, so we were cursed upon leaving DDS, but it's sort of coming good now. Nicky Ryan's almost back to full health. Nicky Rod's back to full health. Ethan's probably a few months away, obviously ACL, serious injury. But yeah, finally starting to come together. We can all start training hard. None of us were training with each other for the longest time because obviously we're going to be the toughest rounds for each other. And because everyone was injured, everyone was scared to injure each other again. But now finally we're all rolling with each other. Like I'll roll with Nicky Rod, Nicky Ryan. Uh, obviously Ethan's on the side. We'll just abuse him. We won't really get a roll with him yet. But yeah, everything's coming together now. Looking, it's going to be a good year, 2022. My prediction is we're going to have someone in every division for ADCC, so long as Isaac wins those Asian trials. Seems like Craig's loving the camera being out today. How'd you get ear infection? When, when you sleep, did you cry and the, the flu got stuck in your ear? Nah, I'm, I've been working so hard that the sweat's been dripping in my ear. <laughs> okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Got you. When you watch today's uh, session, you're going to see that we, we have a lot of wrestling focus. Obviously, you don't need to be a wrestler to come in here, but we're going to train in such a way that guys are going to constantly be trying to get back to their feet, shoot doubles, shoot singles from every position. Lots of, uh, we're stealing a lot of moves from wrestling to see how we can implement it into jiu-jitsu, and we sort of uh, guide the positional sparring in such a way to allow that to happen. If you come to the B team, everyone's going to be trying to get back to the feet. There's going to be very little traditional lay flat on the back jiu-jitsu training. So we're, we're trying to push the sport in a different direction and that's basically steal as much as we can from wrestling and rebrand it into our own names so we can obviously sell it on BJJ Fanatics. What's up guys, welcome to B Team today. Uh, we're gonna be doing a little bit of scrimmage wrestling. I'm gonna show some different finishes from singles, attacking the waist, putting your partner down to the mat. And uh, let's get to it. We're gonna work on uh, finishing single legs, right? A lot of times I'm wrestling an opponent and I do a good job of getting into a single, but sometimes a guy is uh, a better scrambler than, than me, so I have to figure out what decisions I'm gonna make on the fly. When I'm here, before I score on an opponent, before I put him down, my goal is almost always to get behind them initially. So I get to a, a single leg however I do. Generally, when I'm getting my single legs, I start off head, facing them and I kind of turn off to the side so I'm not as much of a target. If I'm right in front of my opponent, he can pull my head around, start guillotines or just in generally, in general, start moving me a bit easier. So as soon as I get to the single, I like to shift my body to where I'm kind of disappearing in front of them. I'm, I'm a smaller target, right? Once I'm here, I like to use my knees to pinch a little bit and lean into my opponent. I don't want to be have, just carrying his leg. I want to make him carry my weight. So I put my hips uh, out back a little bit and I put all my weight on my leading shoulder so I'm kind of heavy on this leg. Now from here, I like to take my, my rear hand and reach right to the waist. Because I'm here, it's kind of easy to lock secondary hand and or take different, pro different steps to getting him down. Again, my goal before I put a opponent down to the mat, before taking him down, is to get behind him. So I'm gonna start with a single leg. I get to the single. Once I'm here, I like the pressure downward with my shoulder, weighing on his leg. Now, I immediately take my rear hand to the hip and I try to circle behind him. As I circle, I lock secondary hand and generally I can take a back step, getting immediately behind my opponent and or 
to this uh, wizard position. Once I'm here, there's a lot of different things I can do, but for now, I just want you guys to focus on getting the hands locked around the waist and get stepping behind your opponent. Less of a trip, right? More of a creating a wedge. What you did is not, not wrong at all. But when I'm coming here, instead of extending my leg and tripping, I just create a wedge to sit him over. So I use my upper body to, to sit him over that knee, and it's pretty easy to circle him down to the mat. Okay. Looks, good. Looks better. Looks better. What's gonna happen, right? If I get, this guy's really good, when I go to back step, he's gonna have sticky. So it's hard for me to, to circle, right? I would say 50% of the time you end up like this, yeah. other half, you end up completely skipping that leg. Yeah. Either way, when we go to step back, we just get, go to create the better angle. Now we can step deeper, start sitting over, and down to the mat. Even with the sticky hook. But do a good job of keeping your head, your ear glued to his chest, so that way you can use your upper body to put him down. Some good rolls going on. This is a noon session, so always we got good numbers at noon. But yeah, everyone's wrestling, scr scrimmage wrestling, training hard. A few competitions coming up, so it's good to see the guys all uh, putting in some work right now. When I'm going, uh, I'm going 50-50, right? You guys falling back for defense or for offense? Boom. Would I use these grips to initially hide my knee line and then break? Actually, yeah, ideally the first thing you want to do is fight for the knee position. So you're doing a good job with your hands placed mm -hmm. on the feet, but just make sure the first thing you do is turn it from 50-50 to winning the inside position with the knee. Okay, so. and that's considered? Yes, correct. Boom. Now just make sure you keep your legs locked. I will go I'll cross. Go cross. Not yeah, figure four. Not figure four because then it'll be, yeah. Exactly. Toe hold, right? Exactly. Okay, okay. And then from here, whenever you're ready, a push and a pull. Beautiful. Good. Separating your legs. Nice. Yeah. Good. Is an order of operations that needs to happen first. You know? The goal of this movement is to get your shoulder directly in the hip. Sometimes you'll end up a little bit further away. That's okay, but just understand that the closer you, your shoulders to the hip, the better you sitting him down is going to be. So once again, I go for the single leg. I get to it. I try to circle to the hips immediately. He defends well. I lock my hands on the leg again. I back step, bring my shoulder to the hip, and sit him down. So one, once more, get to the single, try to get to the hip, doesn't work. Back step, sit him down right away. Any questions? One, two, three. Nikki Rod, man, the fucking, the juggernaut. So definitely the uh, biggest guy on the team, uh, most heavily wrestling backgrounded person. Uh, super valuable in that sense, like super, he knows how to train like as, uh, as wrestlers train like in a wrestling class, like not just like uh, jujitsu guys doing wrestling, like he knows how actual wrestlers train. So that's super valuable. Um, also great banter, you know, it's, we're, con we're all constantly roasting each other for, you know, you name it, so uh, that's always good. Nikki Rod ranks number one in the confidence realm of B team, guaranteed. He's miles ahead of the whoever's in second place. Maybe, maybe Craig or I don't know. I don't know who's in second, but Nikki Rod is is far ahead in the confidence. It's hard to unravel the enigma that is Nikki Rod. He's very very cerebral, very complex person. Mickey Rod is super amazing. Um, he is the person you see competing. He's this beast, he's intense, um, but there's also a, a person underneath there that cares a lot about his training partners. If you ask him a question during teaching, he'll share it. Um, when it comes time to roll, he's intense, but he too has a ton of control for a bigger guy. He's not, uh, make no mistake about it, he's not just some big, strong guy that wrestles, that can throw you around. He knows a ton of jujitsu. Some of my favorite classes have been uh, Nikki's classes just because, man, um, you learn more of the wrestling game but he breaks it down at a level that even someone who's not a phenomenal wrestler can learn to wrestle a little bit better or the jujitsu on the mat it's always in, explained in a way that I'm like man his techniques have been the ones I immediately use uh, whenever I've taken a class from him some techniques require thought and drilling 
his techniques are applicable immediately. So he taught a, a guard pass last week, body lock passing. I immediately added that to my game and was passing people's guard. So um, his teaching is top tier. Um, I don't even need to speak on him as an athlete. Every, everyone sees him. He's one of, if not the most athletic heavyweight that there is. Um, so I'm, I'm super excited to see his run at ADCC coming up. As a person, I will say genuinely, um, him and his brother, his brother Jay is in here a lot. They're great, great guys. And you have a question, they're always willing to answer it, always willing to work with you. And he's an amazing elite level coach as well. Move a lot. <laughs> Start, I'm gonna start with a. Can I start with the armbar, like stretched out? Yeah. So I guess to start, I was always a wrestler. I wrestler. I wrestled in uh, high school in New Jersey. I wrestled a year Division three in college. That was in Virginia. Um, after wrestling for a year in college, I kind of started chasing the kind of social media stuff. I started posting a lot on Instagram and, and trying to build a following throughout the summer uh, after my uh, initial year of college. Then uh, pretty much while I was chasing that social media stuff, I signed with Wilhelmina Models, became a fitness model. Um, and to get a little bit in better shape, um, I started doing jujitsu. So I was actually bouncing at the time at like a, uh, a little nightclub. And uh, the talk of like who's tougher comes up, you know, in, inside the nightclub. And pretty much I was like, you know, I could, I could beat up all these guys, you know, no, no problem. But some of these guys trained jits and they were like curious, you know, about my wrestling versus jiu jitsu. So they invited me to the train one day and I just uh, pretty much sat on top of all of them, took them down, pinned them, and it was pretty easy. And then uh, soon after that, started, you know, training specifically to just get in better shape for modeling. And then uh, I realized very soon that you know, I was better than pretty much everybody I rolled with uh, as soon as I started, just because of my wrestling. So uh, I started taking, started taking competition seriously. I want to say uh, probably my second week of, of jiu-jitsu. So at my second week of jiu-jitsu, I did like a, a little local competition, like a grappling industries in Wildwood. And uh, I must have had seven matches. I scared, scored, scored like 85 points to, to zero. I had like four or five subs out of the seven matches. Some of them were black belts, some of them were brown and purple. Um, obviously not like world beaters, but you know, was, I did it pretty easily. And then after that, I decided to start keep training every day and just do local competitions until you know, I just kind of uh, fell into what it is today. I've been in a few fights, and I've never thrown a punch standing up, you know? So everything will be take down to the ground, toss a punch, toss an elbow. The thing is, when you fight, like, for real, without gloves and stuff, your hands are so fragile. Like, one punch, yeah, you might hit them hard, but you're gonna break your hand. And it's like, uh, you know, I always feel like knees and kicks and elbows are the way to go in a real fight. You know, take that guy down and some ground and pound. But uh, yeah, I've been in a few fights, but I was never, uh, never uh, a fight starter. You know, I'm more of a peace kind of guy. Uh, we're setting ourselves up, our far future up, to make you know kind of a dynasty um, is what we we want B team to become. So we open a few, we uh, we have our first initial B team gym here. We're building a, a, a really really wide and, and fan base to where like I'm lifting weights and people are like, hey, like I don't train jits, but I'm a huge fan of your grappling and your lifestyle and B team as a as a whole. So. It's really nice to see that we're expanding beyond jiu-jitsu and intriguing uh, people, you know, uh, around the sport. You know, I'm in a position where, you know, I, ha I have a, a place like this where we own, we control everything that uh, we want to control in here. We have, we, every, each owner has freedom to, you know, for, for input and for changes, for any advice, that, uh, you know, that they have. And I think it's a very uh, cohesive collective unit. Uh, and that's why it works so well. Everybody's friends with each other. And if there is an issue, you know, we bring it upon ourselves to, to talk about it initially before it becomes a deep issue. You know, we have, we have really good chemistry in here between the coaches, uh, the teaching strategy and, and the business strategy. And uh, I think everybody just loves coming in here and, and it makes it easier to, to work hard when you're having fun.
from, I had to like address the arm drag and the shallow chin immediately. We're just ignoring that, really. Yeah, yeah. Even your guillotines, you're not just placing it there, it's just like a little front, you know? Just to make you yeah, yeah. second guess. Uh, Craig, Craig gets better at wrestling every every day, every week. It's weirdly deceptive. Doesn't look like he's good. He knows what he's doing. Rolling or wrestling? Rough. Rough one. I will teach you one of my favorite moves, which is ankle up. What's up, guys? My name is Ethan Krellerstein. I'm a Canadian working at B-Team, and today we're gonna go uh, play around a bit at, at the Cosmic Coffee Spot. We're gonna go get some coffee, get some food. Um, that's it. 